your permission, Lord, and in your sacred presence. With your heart united with that of your mother. Some poor thoughts about your power made manifest in the light of the Blessed Sacrament and Our Lady. Sun worship didn't begin with package holidays to Spain. In this country, of course, we think of Stonehenge, and in recent years, the unhinged behavior of some at the summer and winter solstice, etc., when stone and light and shadow are aligned. Architects of all ages work with light, despite the fact that they, for their materials, are using the most solid of those things that the Lord has given us, stone. And they work with the light from the sun. Rather more cultivated and more recent than Stonehenge, we can think about the man who built Versailles or at least whose idea it was, Louis XIV, the Sun King. For many years, experts thought that the buildings, the canals and the gardens of Versailles were all orientated, all directed to the point where the sun sets on August the 25th. August the 25th is the feast of King St. Louis, ancestor to the Sun King. However, recent measurements find that it corresponds not to the 25th, but to the 15th of August. The Assumption. The father of the Sun King, called Louis XIII, had made a solemn vow, establishing the Assumption as a national feast in France, long before the promulgation of that great dogma in 1950. And he did so begging the intervention of our Blessed Lady, the Virgin Mary, because he'd been without an heir for 22 years. In 1637, the pleas of Louis XIII were heard, and the Queen gave him Louis Donnet, who would become the Sun King. We can see in something like that how the warp and the weft of state and faith were so, so closely allied, woven into society in that day. Oh, what a difference from today. Light and life. I'm indebted to Bishop 
Robert Barron for his thoughts about the Cathedral Notre Dame de Chartres. Some of you may have been to Chartres. Some of you may have been there on pilgrimage. It was founded in 1260 on the basis of another church, even older. And the design of the church is that, as it were, when we look down upon it in plan, as though it were the body of Our Lady. And in the nave, towards the west, there is a labyrinth, a floor design, and it's divided into four quadrants. There's an outer ring, and it's about 42 feet in diameter. And if you were to trace it, like perhaps many young children might want to do when they go there to visit, you could be there quite a long time, simply walking up and down the lines. Its origins are mysterious. There's no definite reason given. There are other examples of this in other places. And perhaps it represents a type of calendar, sort of calendar that might be used to determine the date of Easter each year. The shapes could be the lunar months. If you go on the internet and look it up, you'll find that there's a lot of pseudo-pagan rubbish about it. And if you'll allow me a little digression, the pagan mentality that we live in thinks that Christianity has evolved from the primitive worship of nature, and we're now trying to hide that. For some, of course, they might approve of that. For others, it will be a case of sneering at superstition. The Christian does not confuse the created with the creator. No, we are not pantheists. Sure, God has created this world, light and stone. But we're not going to worship those things. No new age here, no earth goddess here. To return to the design of Chartres, the sun streams through the rose window into the labyrinth. The Cathedral of Our Lady. Now, many painters have attempted to depict the Annunciation, haven't they? You may have seen some of them. Sometimes they draw a straight line from the Archangel Gabriel to Our Lady. As it were, a light line, perhaps even with words on it. Most moving, aren't they? But in architecture, the artist has a greater possibility. The light from the heavens enters our world through the rose window taking on the colors of the best of our human nature, the only sinless human being. Think of it, the light streaming through a window. There's a parallel, you know, with the way Holy Scripture was inspired. 
God allows his pure light of truth to be expressed through a human medium so that we feel we know, oh, they're not sinless, tax collector Matthew, physician Luke. It's through their window that we have the scripture. If we picture the cathedral of Our Lady at Chartres, we have the apse as her head. We have the transepts transept as her arms and the nave as her body. Perhaps we can think of the labyrinth as the womb of Our Lady. And the rose window streams that light from the heavens into her very human but perfect body. When the light is right, the colors shine down perfectly on the labyrinth, which is the same size. Oh, the labyrinth is a calendar all right. It's God's calendar for the salvation of the world. And the Annunciation is the day that calendar begins. The power of the Holy Spirit to make fruitful Our Lady is thus beautifully represented by the arrows of the sun through the mysterious darkness of the cathedral, and yes, better expressed than in paint on canvas. And the angel being come in, said unto her, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. There's a directness. There's a directness about the encounter of the archangel with the Virgin. And in the cathedral, we can imagine the light striking the womb of Our Lady directly in the fullness of time. Now, of course, it is a very important part of our faith that we have no first-class relics of Our Lady. You have to remember that, don't we? I'm not denying devotion to relics, and I'm not denying the role of Our Lady. But because we believe not just in the Annunciation and the Incarnation, but also in the Assumption of Our Lady, then if there were first-class relics, then we would have grounds to doubt. And surely, when Our Lady was carried up to heaven, there would have been those who would have searched for that. And I think, really, that rose window also depicts beautifully the passing of Our Lady into heaven. Again, on a shaft of light, as it were, carried up, wonderfully ethereal, delicate. In between, we have the Incarnation. And I certainly didn't know this, but there is the Sancta Camisa. Chartres is the home of the tunic worn by the Virgin Mary at Christ's birth. There we have it. Annunciation, incarnation, assumption. 
Our Lady is no optional extra. When we share with our Protestant friends in catechesis and evangelization, let us never forget that Our Lady is central to God's plan, to his calendar. She embodies the reception of the word. God prepared Israel for the coming of the Messiah. He prepared Our Lady in a design far more beautiful and far, far greater than that of Chartres Cathedral. And of course, we mustn't forget that as we worship our Lord here, present on the altar, the light here is not external. The light comes from our blessed Lord who, after all, created it. Our Lord beams down on us, too. Are we ready for this? Are we going to make that crucially important date in our calendar, namely Easter, the fulfillment, the working out of our salvation, are we going to prepare for that? Are we going to be prepared for the Lord to come into our hearts? Please God, he will find them, oh, not immaculate as Our Lady, but free from sin. On a day like this, do take the opportunity for confession. It is one of the saddest features, and when historians come to write about this period, the collapse of the sacrament of confession will, I'm sure, be a very important factor recognized in our troubles. Make sure, make sure that you can receive that powerful beam of light from our Lord into a home which is cleansed of sin. Are we ready to be made fruitful as Our Lady was? Are we ready to be those who will serve in the vineyard of the Lord? Not just on a wonderful occasion like this, but every day. Are we going to reflect that light ourselves are we going to share it? Oh, our hearts should be moved this afternoon by the presence of our Lord and so close his mother. But let's remember all of those indifferent, hostile, the ones who are not here, the ones of our own family who have fallen away. Oh, may the light shine, shine on them through us. May our lives be such that they can't possibly find an excuse why they cannot come and adore and love. A labyrinth is not a maze. A maze is a place where you get lost. 
No. This is a calendar. And our time is now. Our time to worship the Lord, to venerate his mother, and then to share that light streaming through our lives. Fiat, may it be done unto me according to thy word. Amen.